Well, I wouldn't want to say whether you should not try that at home without the instructor's instruction, uh, but don't worry, um, we'll get through all of that. That's the one and only Kathy uh, right there in that particular video, dancing to um, all of the tunes. And that's why she's joining us today to explore that journey with us. I'm being joined, or oh, we're being joined on the program on the morning brief for the very first time. We're having a dancer on our show. That tells you that uh, uh, when we're done with your mental health, we need to, you know, help you with your. No, not mental, not mental health. Body, <laughs> body, body health this time. With the booster for your With mental health. With the booster for your mental health. So, uh, we've been joined in the program by the founder, creative director, Kathy Inc. and Kathy Creative Agency. She's a Nigerian dancer and choreographer, award winning dancer, Guinness Book of World Record holder, and of course, her name, Dr. Kafaya Kafi Shafar, but we know her as Kafi. Kafi, welcome to the Morning Brief. Thank you for having me, and I'm breaking, making history again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, on your show. You're a history I'm maker. the first dancer on the Morning Brief. <laughs> I thought I was the first dancer. Did you see my move? Why do you, why, why do you always want to claim too many things? I'm Just sorry, a few I'm moments sorry. ago, you wanted to be a okay, footballer. I respect myself. When the, when the Red Mirror was here, he said he wanted to join the army. What exactly have you done? I well. I wanted to join the army, so. <laughs> what exactly have you not tried? Maybe his middle cooking. name is kind of Jack. Jack? Is it you know, middle name? Yeah. Jack. You got it, Jack. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure people have been dancing in Nigeria for a very long time, but when yeah. Kathy came on the scene, um, it was different because she came with that record. Walk us through how you appeared and how you sustained it. Well, I would say um, it's all God aligning, you know, the set preparation and opportunity meeting itself. Um, when I started dancing, before I even thought of it as a profession, I always saw it as something to help with my mental health. Like, it's funny you guys were talking about mental health today. And growing in that um, average Nigerian household where you have split parenting, like divorced parenting, as a young teenager, you're trying to navigate through life and everything like that. So na dance was that art form that I found solace in. I, I used as, let me escape somewhere where I can become something. And um, I realized that it was also going to be useful because it had an impact on me. And when I went to, I, I kind of like relieved other people in the social um, environment. I found that people needed some kind of escape, either for fitness or wellness reason, or just for a place where they just want to be. And I started exploring that at the National Stadium. That's where it really started. At National Stadium, I was doing it for fitness or wellness, purely for that. And then I used to be a size 16, and I was using it for weight loss. And other really? Women, yeah. 16? 16. 16. Yes. This cafe we're looking at? Yes, this cafe. I wish I could get you a picture. <laughs> yeah, so, and it was through that I was doing that pro bono work at the National Stadium, bringing dance to the fitness and wellness scene, and people were finding more exciting. They were finding all the monotonous going to the gym was a bit boring. Yeah. So dance gave them some kind of life, and we were building a following at the National Stadium until I found the entertainment space by chance. It was more or less like I was in school, and somebody says, oh, you're a very good picture model, and we want to use you for a show. I was like, you need to appear. I was like, uh, hey, they said they call it Karamba Night. I was like, ah, I've not done that kind of thing before in my life. And I was like, okay, what, what does it entail? I said, okay, it requires you to do some other pageantry yeah. format. It was in a pageantry format. And you required to do, I said, I hope I'm not wearing bikini. I hope I'm not <laughs> doing, I cannot walk in heels. And then I was like, more of a tomboyish feeling at that time. And you're like, no, 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 no. You know what? What talent do you have? Come and display it there. And oh. Yeah, so I said, oh, I can just come and display I, I can dance. And when I got there, the story is really big, it's on my book. And when I got there, I, they were like, join a group of ladies to dance. I was like, no, I want to do solo, because they were doing cheesy dance. You know those kind of dance, I was like, he lives in you, you he lives in me. I was, like, I was like, ouch. I was like, I'm sorry. That was our dance thing. <laughs> sorry, I know if you do that one. So I was like, I can't do that. And apparently, to cut a long story short, that was where that particular show had a lot of industry giant there and then from um, Lexi Du to um, the Rugged Man to Adil Ayuba. There were so many industry people there. And when they spotted me on that stage, that was when I like, came back to like, all of them at once. We want you on our video. We want you on our video. And it started. Then uh, two years into that, everything was really fast. Then I met um, Mr. Ben Murray Bruce of Silverbird, who looked at me and said, how long can you dance for? I was like, I do not know. How long can you really dance? I, I don't know. Let's break a record. Let's do something for Nigeria. Let's let's put Nigeria on a good on a good place and on, on the map. I was like, yes, I said all of these things, but I don't know how we're gonna do that. <laughs> and it was like, yeah, we could break a record. I'm gonna find that out. And 
he was true to his words. He found out, applied for it, and called me. I said, Kevin, let's go and break it. I said, sir, excuse me. <laughs> you have never told me what the former record was. You, I said, you just believe you. This one believes so cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was it. And that was the opportunity. And for me, I think the driving force for me was I'm very patriotic. I believe in Nigeria so much, despite everything going on. I feel that individually we can all contribute mm. to the joy and peace that our nation deserves one person at a time so i just felt like look this thing was going to be done 28th of september into uh, october which would be october 1st so i was like i was driving into that independence Probably, day yeah. uh, situation and that was the driving force really for me to 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 going into that um feat yeah uh, okay, I, I'm, glad, I'm glad you mentioned Lex Zidu along the way because I yeah. recall your legendary performance in his video, Baby Skeske, yes. from all those years ago that I played a lot, you know, while I was entertainment presenter. Uh, but let's look at that, that uh, journey up until where you are today. Yes. It's not many Nigerian dancers that have been able to evolve and gain that visibility. What value do you think the entertainment industry attaches to dancing as a profession? Um, right now, they are beginning to be more aware. And I think I also played a major role into creating the opportunity to understand the economic value and value proposition of dance uh, in, the, in the entertainment food chain. Let me put it that way. Because it's always put at the bottom of the food chain, especially when it comes to remuneration, earning, mm -hmm. and value placement. However, in terms of what it gives, okay, and how much it adds to the bottom line, it's really large, really big. So my job over the years over the decade is to enhance that value chain that dance is bigger than we see it it's more than just a cultural essence that we want to display at our national uh, celebratory uh, events it is it is more to it in terms of um, the science of dance in itself the value it brings to the human body when we talk about the health sector the value it brings to cognitive reasoning the uh, educational sector and so many areas that that people are not aware of. So it's really about an awareness situation. I'm not aware of that dance plays a major role. So even the dance practitioners think it's all about, I must dance for David Do. I must dance for Tiwa Savage, I must dance for, there's so many other services you can render as a dancer that the nation, don't, that the people, common people don't even realize. So what I've been doing is expanding all of that. And that is what has created sustenance for me because I keep revealing the inner like inner value chains that are tied to the dance artistry in so, itself. So quick follow up, when you dance for those big names, to yes. a Savage, David O, Burner Boy, yes. what's the remuneration like for a Nigerian dancer? Uh, I would say we, we look at it from different um, services you render. Like if you're, if you're rendering service as a creative director, it's much, much higher. If you're rendering service as a choreographer, then if, as a dancer. So as a dancer, let me start from the, like I would say basic, I would say bottom, I would say basic. As a dancer, you are more or less like the interpreter of what the creative director or the choreographer has put in place. When I started, you get zero in error. In fact, it was more or less like we are doing you a favor to be on TV. Be on our video. Yes, but I had to create an understanding of the value I put. You said something really interesting. You said you were playing Lexi Do's video all, on and on and on. You know how much an average label needs to commit to the promotion of their artist's music or sound. Mm. Then when you now have a dancer who kind of like catalyzes that without them paying that much because the work in the video is so interesting, so amazing, so alluring that even the TV station sees that good enough content for them to repeat without the label putting money into that like an organic yeah. reach for you that is why I was able to start making that conversation that you cannot pay me nothing because I'm adding value to the bottom line of even your business structure because you're going to commit a, a certain amount of money to your marketing um, your, you have a marketing budget, right, for your for a promotional budget, but now I'm cutting that in half just because I'm in your video. So it's from there where I started building it. So from getting nothing, I started getting paid twenty thousand dollars naira, thirty thousand naira, up to the point of I'm not paid in millions to be to be to appear. But that is for me. An average kid on the street now before was getting nothing, but now just average. Like you are not really that good, but you are okay. You should be able to get twenty thousand naira gig. And you get four or five gigs a month, that's over 100,000 naira. 
a month and that is really good to start like it's better than mm. our basic um yeah. our income what's our basic <laughs> income right now so yeah <laughs> the minimum so, wage yeah. the minimum the wage. wage like yeah so that's why uh, my establishment can guarantee some form of a uh, revenue um uh, place for an average dancer because yeah. if you are good like in two, let us say, in like six months for very, very good, a year for just budding, and two years for a beginner, you can start earning up to 80,000 naira a month, right? If you are committed to the art of, of dance, that's guaranteed. I've done that over and over and over again. So for a choreographer, minimum, you should be able to earn about 150 upwards. For a creative director, 500,000 naira upwards. And that has become much better now mm -hmm. with the amount of awareness that dance has gotten. And, and, and that's the value you bring to the table, ensuring yes. that this is standardized and yes. helping others. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I wish, I'm sure you wish you had that help, which you're providing Ooh, others. I then. wish I did, but God has used me as that bridge. <laughs> Absolutely. So, that's the beauty. I, uh, I appreciate so, that. Um, you're, you're constantly evolving. A lot yes. of people ask, how has Kathy stayed consistent? What's going on? Is she still 20? You're over 40, by the way. <laughs> yes. And I a lot am. of people wonder, what a minute. She still looks like she's she's going to be here for like 100 more years. Yes, I am. Uh, but I, I know. Ask. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah. So uh, what you're evolving into, what to expect? Because yeah. apparently there's still a lot to expect yes, from you. Like, like you said in my narration, you're like Cafe Incorporated. Cafe Incorporated now is a holding company for over five expressions of the Cafe brand, mm -hmm. which has been birthed through the needs, the pain points that I have seen in the creative industry and I've been able to establish um, um, companies that serve those those needs. So we have what we call the um, the advisory part of the Cafe Creative Agency, where I d provide services as a consultant. A lot of creative people are just creative and talented. A lot don't know how to brand, market, uh, put themselves together, structure their businesses, mm. and all of that. So I create, I I, I give out such services. Um, we have um, the fitness Ijoda, which is very 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 intentional living for you know what we where we are in Africa right now a lot of mental health issues, a lot of eating, uh, unhealthy eating issues. So Ijoda uses African dance mm. art to create Ijoda. Um, Ijoda. Ijoda. So Ijoda is, where is the dance? Ijoda is dance is good. good. <laughs> yes. So I have Ijoda. So it's quite a number of things. So I've evolved nice. into... I'm still evolving into the fullness of the manifestation of the art in itself vis-a-vis -vis the economic opportunities that it offers to the environment yeah. that I am. Mm. And that's why we are very big now on passion to profit. An average African, the problem is not our passion, the problem is not our talent, the problem is the process of, the knowing of, the know-how of, and that is where I'm investing a lot right now into. Kavi, yeah, I have to ask you this question. But, you're a woman in the industry, yes. right? And it's tough being a woman already in the industry. Now you're a dancer. <laughs> a lot of people see you dancing, and what they're thinking about is different from the art. My brother, you get yes, the point, right? I get the Let's point. Let's not get too deep into that. So you know. uh, the parents, the people who say, you never dance yeah. over my dead body, mm -hmm. because you are seen at the bottom of the, you are seen as someone who can, they can just approach anyhow, touch anyhow. Yeah, immorality and all of that. That's the point. Yes. So um, is that true, one? And um, how do we save God? Thank you very much. Okay, Jeffrey. I love that question. <laughs> very, very important because that is one of the reasons why I have actually launched the talent management services right now. And one of the, I've even started doing it for artists. I've been doing that for artists for years, apart from dancers. Parents are scared and they have fear is valid. The entertainment industry is a, is a, is, is a very uh, exposed area where kids have exposure towards drugs, immorality, um, and all those vices that you are afraid of. However, there are still good people in there. And what we are trying to do as an establishment is to create that safety uh, environment where you can nurture your talent without having to take anything before you feel inspired. You understand what I'm saying? Or be approached or sell your body for favors before you actually climb up the ladder. It is tough. However, I am here. If I could get here, and, and every young person can get here. And I'm proud to, to, to let you know that a lot of parents, both in high, low, mid um, um, levels Strata. of, yeah, are coming to me to say, I want my daughter to be a dancer because of you. You are that dancer my daughter or son would have to, you know, can watch to be, or an artist can watch to be. So we are providing that safe heaven.
Well, uh, we have so many other we questions have, for you, but we lot. cannot we go on questions. with those questions. <laughs> We're going to keep Kathy, but uh, since we started off celebrating our armed forces yes. uh, today, we're going to wrap up with that and then come back. Maybe there'll be time for Kathy to dance us out of the studio. <laughs> but let's take um, a video from our armed forces. To serve as an inspiration for heroic acts of self-sacrifice. Since then, colors have become the symbol. Pictures coming from the nation's capital, uh, the remembrance that the arcade ground in Abuja, that's a venue of the 2024 Armed Forces Remembrance Day. Uh, some guests have made earlier entrances, and uh, you can see men in uniform in their ceremonial uniform right there getting ready for that uh, symbolic celebration uh to remember our fallen hero and to celebrate our veterans who are alive for their services uh, for the nation and the country protecting the territorial integrity of our great nation so you see uh the president is expected here any moment from now so a lot of the members of the armed forces their spouses ministers state officials and federal officials all expected at the arcade ground in uh, most at the, at the nation's capital. So it's, it's a national arcade you're watching and you're yeah. seeing live pictures. Mm -hmm. Any moment from now, uh, we will be seeing the ceremony kickoff in the nation's capital at about 10 a.m. when the president would have arrived. And then all of the ceremonies will continue, including the laying of wreath, a remembrance of our fallen heroes. So those are live pictures from Abuja, the nation's capital. Guys, beautiful to, to see the wives, uh, all the spouses, you know, dr dressed. Uh, I mean, I, I love the colors, but it's very symbolic, and, and I'm glad that we're doing this as a nation to show that we really appreciate our armed forces. Uh, Kathy, yeah. do we have time for? A, okay. I want to know what the biggest move is right now. So once I go out there the and make that move. move I'm, I'm, I get the job, I get the money. Just, I'll, I'll do something really seconds. simple. Yeah. Something simple seconds. in 10 seconds. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, all of you, are you ready? You yes. Yeah. Okay, you want to get up? Okay. Right. Buga is no longer trending. No, let's do this. It's a piano in yeah. a way, so, but let's do a simple I'm a piano. Okay, okay, hold on. Let, let's, let's make sure you're, you're, you're ready. Uh, okay. 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 Let me help you with that. Cardi, just, just come here. I can't even put it in my pocket. Absolutely. Yeah, in my pocket. Are you ready? Yeah, we're ready. Bring one hand forward like this. Forward. Bring one hand like that. Like this. And put it to the side. This. Like this. And put it to the side. Like this. Yes, and now you have to now do your mouth like this. Exactly. So, eh. what's up with the mouth? <laughs> the mouth is part of it, too. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, you can go press down. The music. Hey, you can go down. Oh, hey, President. Hey. Ah, president. <laughs> Goodness. Oh, you wow. set us up. <laughs> <laughs> so, the mouth is part of it. It's yeah. part of it. Okay. Thank you. So, Let's sign up with this. Okay. Thank you so much for watching our esteemed viewers. It's the morning brief. brief. We're always here to brighten up your okay. morning. And we'll be back again to do the same time next, next week. week. Yes. Meanwhile, do this with us as we sign out. Thank you for no, watching. No, not next week, tomorrow. We're tomorrow. coming back tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. We're coming Today's back tomorrow. Monday. I am Bukola Koka. So we do. <laughs> Jeffrey, your name? <laughs> I'm Jeffrey, what's up, man? I'm Kevin. I'm Kevin. <laughs> <laughs>